has the action stayed the same? About 1880 is when things were more or less standardized. If you if you look at European actions, so so early early, so you know like Beethoven, 1800 1820, pretty much every piano manufacturer they kind of had they they did it all right. They they manufactured the action, they manufactured you know all sure. the components, and and they all kind of had their own secret sauce, their own different. It was yeah. a different mechanism. It more or less did the same thing. But, it's, but some of them are wildly different. And a lot of those European manufacturers continued until 1910 or 1920 to kind of do their own unique thing. Nothing was universal. Right. That's right. Maybe universal within the brand, yes. but not from brand to brand. Yes. But the United States, uh, they started going towards universality and things were more or less universal entirely, with a few exceptions here and there by about 1880. And so your action is virtually the same thing as this action. So your action being built in 1911, this action here was built, you know, I mean it could have been built yesterday, but it happened to be built about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then if you go back to 1880, most, most upright pianos, American built, upright pianos that you find would basically be this design. Yeah. And same with grands. And then, and then by 1910, 1920, um, the Europeans kind of caught on and said, yeah, maybe this is better and it's more efficient, more cost effective, and it works better. So the, the Europeans kind of standardized? No, Americans standardized oh. it. The Europeans were the ones who um, who kind of um, wanted to stick to their old ways. Mm -hmm. so, so by 1880, in the United States, things were, were pretty much standardized. But the Europeans kind of held on to their old ways for another 30 years, 40 years, something like that, until they finally said, all right, we'll begrudgingly go along with, yeah. with you Americans. Interesting. Yeah.